For centuries, mankind has been fascinated by lost creatures from long ago, delicately reconstructing their likenesses from long-buried remains. And until recently, these beasts have remained firmly in the past. But what if we told you that scientists planned to resurrect a behemoth that walked the planet during the last ice age? Yep, it's really happening, and the experts may be closer than you think to making this a reality. Experts are resurrecting the woolly mammoth for a wild experiment. As of 2021 there are several different companies working to revive the woolly mammoth, the towering beast that once ruled the Arctic tundra. There's a little more to it than just recreating the science behind Jurassic Park, mind you. If some researchers are to be believed, these experiments could have a real impact on the future of our world. As the Arctic permafrost continues to melt at an alarming rate, scientists are searching for answers, and some are even gazing into the distant past. Though could a resurrected mammoth population really help to stave off climate change? Also, what are the ethical implications of reviving these ancient creatures? All around the world, researchers are debating these questions as the prospect of a 21st century mammoth edges ever closer to reality. And over in the United States, the bioscience company Colossal is about to introduce the concept of de-extinction to the masses. So, will they succeed in bringing these Ice Age giants back to life? By modern standards, the woolly mammoths which began roaming the Earth around 300,000 years ago were certainly impressive beasts. These creatures were apparently capable of growing up to 11 feet tall at the shoulder and sometimes weighed more than 6 tons. Although their closest living relative is the Asian elephant, they were actually more similar to the larger African genus, the biggest land animal on our planet today. For thousands of years, woolly mammoths roamed the steppes of North America and Europe, where they grazed on a herbivorous diet despite their fearsome tusks. In the Arctic, their great bulk helped to trample grasses and compress snow, contributing to the carefully balanced ecosystem. Meanwhile, their thick layers of fat and fur ensured that they could survive in even the coldest of climates. Unfortunately, many of the adaptations that allowed woolly mammoths to thrive in challenging conditions also made them appealing prey to early humans inhabiting that same environment. During the Middle Paleolithic era, the beasts lived alongside Neanderthals, who often hunted them for their meat and furs. According to archaeologists, they even used the creature's bones to fashion rudimentary shelters and tools. Later during the Upper Paleolithic period, modern humans left Africa and migrated to Europe, where they found themselves sharing the landscape with these huge creatures. Like the Neanderthals before them, they quickly realized the value of the woolly mammoths, utilizing their meat and versatile bones. But around 11,000 years ago, the beasts began to rapidly disappear. By that point, the last ice age had ended and the climate was warming up across the world. At the same time, global mammoth habitats were disappearing fast. Struggling to adapt to these changes, the creatures went into a steady decline. Though it wasn't just an increasingly hostile planet that caused them to ultimately disappear. As their numbers plummeted, the remaining woolly mammoths found themselves far more vulnerable to modern humans, whose population was growing and spreading across northern Europe. In fact, the impact of hunting on the ancient beasts was so great that many have blamed mankind exclusively for their extinction. Yet it was probably the result of multiple factors. Even with a changing habitat and an increased threat from hunting, the woolly mammoths did not disappear completely, mind you. For thousands of years, isolated herds actually survived on islands off the coasts of Alaska and Siberia. But eventually these two disappeared, and the creatures apparently vanished for good around 3,700 years ago. Now in the 21st century, our planet's changing climate threatens another extinction. Temperatures are rising all around the world, while melting glaciers have the potential to raise sea levels to devastating heights. In the Arctic, thawing permafrost threatens to exacerbate global warming and release ancient diseases into the atmosphere. With all of this happening around us, might we, like many creatures of the Pleistocene, be destined for extinction? Or will science come up with a way to save us before it's too late?
In countries across the globe, experts are working on a number of solutions. And some believe that the woolly mammoth itself might have a role to play. Though how exactly can an animal that has been extinct for thousands of years save us from the perils of climate change? Ever since the first woolly mammoth remains were discovered preserved in the permafrost beneath Siberia, scientists have been scrambling to learn more about these ancient beasts. Now, that research has taken a startling new direction. As a genetics professor at Harvard University, George Church certainly knows his stuff when it comes to the building blocks of biological life. And in February 2021 he founded Colossal Biosciences. This company is dedicated to a concept that it calls de-extinction, the process of bringing long-dead creatures back to life. Combining the science of genetics with the business of discovery, we endeavor to jumpstart nature's ancestral heartbeat, the Colossal website explains. But what does that have to do with woolly mammoths and climate change? Well, having secured $15 million in funding, the team are starting to make their dream a reality, and the extinct, elephant-like beasts are first on the agenda. Back in April 2013 Church made headlines when he gave a talk about the benefits of de-extinction at the National Geographic Society, later broadcast by TEDx Talks. In it, he explained his belief that woolly mammoths, if resurrected, could help to reduce harmful carbon dioxide emissions in their former habitats around the world. Today, Colossal's website repeats those claims and argues that reintroducing woolly mammoths could help in reversing the rapid warming of our planet. Even more importantly, it adds, the process could also slow down the process of melting permafrost. It's believed that the roaming creatures would trample snow just as they did thousands of years ago, allowing cold air to penetrate to the ground beneath. But could Colossal really bring the woolly mammoth back to life? After all, the creature's genome was sequenced at Penn State University all the way back in 2008, but we've yet to see any successful clones. Well, as it turns out, Church is planning a different approach, and a new Pleistocene era could be closer than you think. In fact, according to reports, the people at Colossal claim that they will have resurrected the woolly mammoth within just six years. Though it won't be a clone, instead, the team hoped to create a type of hybrid. The experts intend to splice ancient DNA with genetic material from an Asian elephant, the closest living creature to the extinct beasts. Currently, CNN reports, the woolly mammoth DNA on record is too damaged for scientists to recreate the creature exactly as it was. And so, researchers plan to use CRISPR, an emerging piece of genome tech, to combine it with elephant genes. The result, they hope, will be a beast that looks almost identical to the extinct giants that once walked the steps. Church told CNN in September 2021 that the project to resurrect the woolly mammoth had been largely kept on the back burner. But things soon changed thanks to the work of genetics professor and serial entrepreneur Ben Lam. He has secured investment for Colossal, and the team have since begun to move forwards on their fascinating project. Interestingly, it's not the first time that Church has experimented with genetics to tinker with biological life. Take his work on pig DNA, for example, which aims to create a creature capable of growing organs for transplant into human patients. If successful, projects such as this one could transform the medical landscape as we know it. Surely, though, this kind of work must be pretty challenging. Well, Church admitted as much in his interview with CNN, but he added that it's also potentially groundbreaking. The expert explained, we had to make a lot of, genetic, changes, 42 so far to make them human compatible. And in that case we have very healthy pigs that are breeding and donating organs for preclinical trials at Massachusetts General Hospital. With the elephant, it's a different goal but it's a similar number of changes, Church continued. To get to this point, CNN reports that scientists at Colossal have analyzed DNA from 23 different creatures, both living elephants and extinct woolly mammoths. Now, they must tweak one genetic code over 50 times to create the beast that has been dubbed a mammophant. According to Church, many of these changes will help the creature to survive in the cold climate of habitats such as the Arctic. Compared to the Asian elephant, for example, 
the creature will have smaller ears and a layer of fat some 4 inches thick. And a coat of long, shaggy hair will also ensure that the beast stays warm as temperatures drop. Interestingly, Church also hopes to engineer a creature without tusks, staving off any potential hunters greedy to get their hands on all that ivory. Though what will happen once the team at Colossal have programmed their mammophon cell? Well, then it's on to the next step, finding a womb capable of hosting the beast. At the moment, researchers envisage placing the embryo in an artificial womb for the duration of the gestation period. But that could take 22 months or more, if living elephant pregnancies are anything to go by. Also, this is breaking new ground for Colossal, so the process is fraught with potential pitfalls. The editing, I think, is going to go smoothly, Church told CNN. We've got a lot of experience with that, I think, though, making the artificial womb is not guaranteed. It's one of the few things that is not pure engineering, there's maybe a tiny bit of science in there as well, which always increases uncertainty and delivery time. Alternatively, the team have also considered using living elephants as surrogates for their genetically engineered mammophant embryos. Yet like much of the project, this has raised some ethical concerns. According to the Center for Paleogenetics Evolutionary Genetics Professor Love Dalane, the two creatures are just as dissimilar as chimpanzees and humans. Given the differences between the two species, there are fears that any elephant surrogate mothers might not survive the process. Is the risk worth it, then? For Church and his team, the value of their project is in the creature's potential impact on climate change, but not everyone agrees. I personally do not think this will have any impact, any measurable impact, on the rate of climate change in the future, even if it were to succeed, Dalane told NPR in September 2021. There is virtually no evidence in support of the hypothesis that, the trampling of a very large number of mammoths would have any impact on climate change, and it could equally well, in my view, have a negative effect on temperatures. Another person who agrees with that hypothesis is University of California paleogeneticist Beth Shapiro, who has written a book about de-extinction. The expert told NPS, I don't want to see mammoths come back. It's never going to be possible to create a species that's 100% identical. Yet she concedes that the technology could be useful for conserving endangered animals that are already alive on Earth. It's a sentiment echoed by paleontologist and director of Wisconsin's Earth Science Museum Joseph Fredrickson. Despite a childhood love of the de-extinction movie Jurassic Park, he believes that the preservation, not resurrection, of endangered animals is key. Speaking to NPR, he explained, if you can create a mammoth or at least an elephant that looks like a good copy of a mammoth that could survive in Siberia, you could do quite a bit for the white rhino or the giant panda. Even Delane, who is not convinced by the ecological goals of Colossal's work, is aware of its potential. He said, I can see some reasons to do the first steps where you are tinkering with cell lines and editing the genomes. I think there is a lot of technological development that can be done, and, we can learn a lot about how to edit genomes, and that could be really useful for endangered species today. Yet many believe that the reintroduction of woolly mammoths to the fragile Arctic ecosystem is a gamble that might not pay off. Fredrickson continued, there is a new normal that has existed for thousands of years that has adapted to the continually changing climate. Bringing back something that has all the characteristics that would have thrived in the Pleistocene doesn't necessarily mean it's going to survive today. The proposed de-extinction of mammoths raises a massive ethical issue, University of Manchester zoology professor Matthew Cobb told The Guardian back in 2017. The mammoth was not simply a set of genes, it was a social animal, as is the modern Asian elephant. What will happen when the elephant-mammoth hybrid is born? How will it be greeted by elephants? Yet Church and the team at Colossal remain convinced that the creatures have the potential to save the Arctic, and fight climate change in the process. In a statement, the company said, with the reintroduction of the woolly mammoth. We believe our work will restore this degraded ecosystem to a richer one, similar to the tundra that existed as recently as 10,000 years ago. Despite ethical and technical concerns, it seems the mammophant looks set to be brought to life. 
But is Church's six-month timescale really possible? According to both Dalane and Fredrickson, such a quick turnaround seems unrealistic for such an ambitious project. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.